I'm going to talk about moving into how to open up the supernatural power of God. And just a couple of little things I'd like to say to start with. What could happen if we could open our hearts to allow the power of God to invade our lives? If we could just open ourselves up to allow the power of God to invade our lives. The Holy Spirit himself is the flame that kindles love into passion. How many people know we could do with a bit more passion? And consumes the, fresh, the fleshly carnal life. I believe that we've got to be delivered from a kingdom into another kingdom. Which is a whole different way of living. Even so, the Holy Spirit is a divine fire that powers, that is the power, oh, sorry, is the divine power that burns inside us and brings light, life, and power into the world. You, you, I, I believe that Jesus wants to do a work in our lives that we really do not know and can't really comprehend. Father, I ask you today by your Spirit that, Lord, that you would just by your power break open the locks that have locked our mind, the things that have gripped us, that have caused us to believe or even think in a particular way that is perhaps not of you. I pray, Lord, that you would explode all over us and open our eyes that we will be able to consume and be able to conceive the great things that you want to do in our lives. And Father, we just give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Releasing the supernatural power of God. Before we can really comprehend it, we've got to understand and we must know the source of this power that we're looking for. I believe that God wants to pour out His power. I believe that God wants to pour out His life. I believe that God wants to do exceedingly, abundantly more than we could even imagine or think. That's what God wants to do. But to do that, something's got to be broken around our lives. We've got to understand who He is and what He's all about. Our Father who dwells in heaven generates this power. Generates this power. Tuesday night, because of circumstances, Elaine passing and just life sort of can come around you like a blanket. And, and that's how I went to the prayer meeting on Tuesday night, just feeling that way. As a matter of fact, about two or three people have come to me this week and said, Neil, what's wrong with you? What, what's going on? Because you don't have that spark or you don't have that thing, but just this things that come around like a blanket. How many people know what I'm talking about? But I started, we went to that prayer meeting and I thought, God, I don't even want to go to the prayer meeting. I, I just want to sit and sulk. I just want to sit here and base myself in, in the self-pity and, and everything else that's going on. But I went along because Nancy said, you've got to go, you're the pastor. <laughs> so I went along and started to, just stood up there and we just started to speak a little bit and then we started to pray in the Spirit. And as we began to pray, in tongues, it was like, if I, I can like it like this, it was like a, a, a generator. Something on the inside began to boom, 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 boom. Like the old piston pump, you know what I mean? It, went, it might have went boom, boom, boom a few times, but all of a sudden it burst into, into action. And, and all of a sudden I found myself praying uh, in, a, in a different manner. I, I, I don't think anybody else really got a much of a chance to pray on Tuesday night. I was just so full of it. I was just so, so pumped. I was just so, so, I don't know, I can't explain it other than it was like a dynamo. It was like a generator that started to generate power. And I could feel that I was, as I was praying, I, I just wasn't speaking idle words. I, I wasn't speaking words just trying to tickle somebody's ear. I wasn't trying to do it. I was, I was actually in, an, in another realm and, and speaking out. 
And I believe that that's what God wants to show us and reveal to us about releasing the supernatural power of God and understanding that our Father who dwells in heaven generates His power. Uh, with this power, God Himself powers the whole universe. No power failures. In Revelation 4, 5, it says, And from the throne proceeds lightnings, thunders, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Round about the throne, God's not just sitting on a cloud, friends. He's not up there playing a harp. Out of the throne room, there's fire and lightnings and thunders and glory to God. Amen. God is the source of all existence. I'm painting a picture here that, that this man, this God who we come and worship, this God who He is supreme, He is almighty, He is everything. And God is the source of all existence. Nothing is and nothing was. And some of the things that just blows our natural mind. He powers the stars in their trillions. God powers the stars in their trillions. Our sun burns at 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Our sun, 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Now, our sun is considered coal compared to many. And it's also considered very small. There are stars a thousand times bigger and a thousand times hotter than our sun. This power holds the whole universe together. I'm trying to, as I say, I'm trying to create something that our God isn't just a little God. He's not a small God, but our God is an awesome God. Our God's power today holds the whole universe. And one of the things that amazes me is that as a young boy, I used to lay in the back of my father's truck and just look up at the stars. And I used to say, where does it end? And I can't even in my natural mind comprehend something that has no end. But you can go forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and never find an end. And with the, the little telescopes and things that man has created, as far as we can find, they create something a little bit bigger and find a whole new universe. But I want to tell you there's so much more out there that you and I will never will we'll see it when we get to glory. <laughs> But right now, our, it's, it's there and God, God is, the, is the one that overrules and overrides and He's the creator of this whole universe. His creative power is beyond natural reason as we look at the earth, as we look at the sea, as we look at the sky. All this came into being when God spoke a word. This book that we have is full of God's promises. In the beginning, it says, God created something so dynamic. He created the whole universe by a word. I'm not even going to try to explain it. But when God spoke a word, it came into a being. How powerful is His voice? That still, small voice that will speak into your ear is so powerful. With that same voice that spoke and created the universe, that, in that we... Who knows what I'm trying to say that I can't say? Because if we don't understand it, my wildest imagination would only be like a, like a pimple compared to what he really created. Came into being when God spoke a word and with the same voice, with that same voice that, 
that created the universe, when he spoke, he called me a son or a newer daughter, perhaps. That same voice calls me his son, and he calls us his daughters, which means this, that I am an heir of this creation. Think of that for a little minute. I'm an heir of this whole creation, this whole power source, everything that God has and everything that God is, is ours, amen. Everything, everything, everything. We're heirs of His creation. I, I'm an heir of His creative power. That creative power that, that spoke the worlds into being, and if we can somehow or other comprehend that when we lay hands on the sick and when we speak, it's not Neil's words, it's not the elder's words, it's not somebody else's words, it's not this word or that word, but somehow or other that word is connected with the creative power of God. They can speak into something that, that, is, that is not alive even and speak life into it. I can remember in the gatehouse, I'm not too sure, Ken, what you were playing. I think it was a, a, an organ. I don't think we had a piano. We had an organ. Did we have an organ? Hey? All right. Whatever we had, anyhow, we had something there. And Ken would be playing the music, and the presence of God would come into that place. We didn't have much going, but we just had God. There was a presence of God that used to fill that place. I can, I can remember people there that, that, had, that were, had broken backs and broken limbs and goodness knows what, that were totally healed in the presence of God. I didn't even know what, who was what and what was who. All I knew is that God says, lay hands on the sick and command the sickness to leave and they will leave. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do it for you. People there that, that had only a couple of days to live, as we laid hands on them, that thing left them and they lived for, for another 20 odd years. Some we never ever heard of, but there was a move of God's Spirit, the power of God, amen. And that's what we've got to be about today. It's about the presence of God. It's about calling down the anointing. But you see, friend, it's not me, it's not you. It's the, that we, because of what God said, I am part of that creative power. I am an heir of that creative power. And if I can just get myself out of the way, and if I can just get my pea brain to come in line with God, and as you lay hands on the sick, you know that they're going to recover. I want to tell you, that's what God's all about. I am part, I'm an heir of God's creative power. And when I look at God and I realize how, how awesome God is and how big and how magnitude He is, that I can plug into that. That I can plug into that just the same today as we've plugged into the 240 volts that are hanging around here that lit up this room. If you and I, friends, I'm going to say this strong, if you and I can get rid of our pea brain thinking and somehow or other reach out into the realm of the Spirit and plug into that supernatural power of God, you and I will generate the light that will light up this world. We could talk about the banks. We could talk about the things that are going on with councils. We can talk about that. But friend, I want to tell you, there's only one person you and I can trust in. There's only one person there that his yea is yea and his nay is nay and his name is Jesus. I'm an heir of his creative power. Nothing is missing. Say that to yourself right now. I am an heir of his creative power. Nothing is missing. So let's get rid of our inferiority and stand up and speak with dignity 
with strength and with authority, not doubting, and let us allow this power to flow through us. We sing songs, flow through me. I want to tell you, friends, there's a reality. In Acts 1, 8, it says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. God wants to empower us more than the church wants to be empowered. Because if God empowers us, and if God comes and invades our lives, and if God comes and delivers me from carnal, natural thinking, perhaps I won't be able to just live the self-centered life that I want to live. I hear too many people say, don't ask God to send you to Hawaii because he won't send you there. And we make a mockery out of it. But I want to tell you, friends, when you, when you and I open our hearts to allow that King of glory, when we allow him to come and invade us in the way that he wants to invade our lives, I want to tell you, it doesn't matter where he sends you, you will go with power, with authority, and you'll never, ever be more happy than you'll ever be. I went to a celebration the other night of an engagement. And I met one of the pastors that pastored with me up at Suncoast. He was sitting there with his wife, and I walked up to him and I said, How are you going? And he looked at me like as if, Yeah, we're getting there. And he looked at me and he said, how are you? I said, I am so excited. I said, I'm so excited. And I said, we're not that far. From a mighty outpouring of his spirit. You see, see you, you can think carnal thinking if you want to. You can think I'm too old. You, you can think it'll never happen. You, you can think in natural, or else you can think another thing. You can start thinking, I said, we're that far from a mighty move of God. And as I spoke those words, you see, our words are creative. If I want to get with you and say, well, Greg, you got no idea, brother, it's getting tough and all, and that might, those words are just as creative. That far. You know what this guy, his eyes lit up. His eyes lit up. He said, oh, Neil, if only we could have what we had. <laughs> and the pineapple said, if only we could have what we had. In the, in the what was that other place? The gatehouse. Well, I want to tell you, my Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. And if there's anything that's changed, it is certainly not Him. And if there's anything that's changed, it's that we have drifted away from the power and the presence of an Almighty God. And I ought to tell you, friends, there's only one way back. It's a cut head on. Keep on going. Amen. Keep on marching. Keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, keep on walking, keep on talking, because I believe that Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, is about to do what He said He would do. He's about to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. There's going to come a revival fire that's going to burn brighter. Hallelujah. We're going to see cancers leave people's bodies. I can remember I was overseas one time and we prayed for this lady and she came back about five minutes later. She said, you won't believe this. I said, what? She said, I went to the toilet and I passed that tumor. It's gone. <laughs> see, it's how you think. It's how you think 
We are that far. We are getting closer. We are getting closer. We are getting closer. We are, look, you can tell me whatever you like, but I want to tell you, we are closer than yesterday. <laughs> We're closer than last month. It's coming, hallelujah. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And that power is going to come upon you still. That same Holy Ghost power that will come upon you, amen. And it will lift you up, glory to God. And every devil in hell will be sorry. Many people think the Holy Spirit is given so we can enjoy the experience and forget about the world's needs. It's not just His purpose for us to get together, to shout, jump, and prophesy over each other. Though we most surely will do it. <laughs> it's not the main purpose. Acts 1 8 says, You will be a witness of my power. He wants us to demonstrate his power. But if we get our eyes off the source, if we get our eyes off God and un don't understand that he is, he is supreme, that, that he is the one that generates the power, he is the one that holds everything in, the, in, ex in his hand, it's all there as, as, according to his word. As he's spoken, all he's got to say is, stop, and it'll all fall apart. If I can catch hold of that, and if I can catch a hold of that, I am an heir of that. I'm a part of that, amen. I'm not some blob on a log. I'm not somebody just waiting for the rapture. I'm not somebody just hanging around. I want to be part of the action, amen. I want to keep on walking. I want to keep on talking. I want to keep on believing because God is God. I believe that the Word of God is very plain, that God wants to use every believer to bring salvation and deliverance to the multitudes. In Joel 3.9, Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. I like this sort of talk, amen? <laughs> Proclaim this. Speak it out. Speak it out. I am so excited. The man looked at me, his eyes looked at me. It seemed come alive. There's still a little flicker that needs to be fanned, amen. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. I'm going to put the mighty women. Let the men and women of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the old say, I am young. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you say you're old, guess what? You're old. Don't die till you're dead. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations, and gather together all around. Come. Oh. Cause you mighty ones to go down uh, there, O oh Lord. Let the nations be wakened. Let the people of God be wakened. How many people want to be wakened? Wake up. Rise up. Hallelujah. And come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down, for the wine press is full, the vats overflow, for their great wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near. It's that far. Hallelujah. <laughs> this guy was saying it a long time ago. I'm saying it today. Amen. It's near. It's near. It's near. In the valley of decision. Oh, Father God, help us. Very, very plain. 
the people in the valley of decision. 1 Corinthians 12, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of us for the profit of all. The gifts are given as He wills. God wants the church to rise up so we can profit everybody. Amen. John 14, uh, 12 to 14 says, Most assuredly I say to you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this will he do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You've got to remember that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he not said it, will he not bring it to pass? He said, in the last days I'll pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. He prophesied it in the book of Joel. and the book of Acts, he fulfilled it. I ought to tell you this, things that he prophesied back there, he's fulfilling today, amen. There's going to come a move of God's Spirit. There's going to come an outpouring of God. There's going to come an anointing that will shake, rattle and roll. There's, there's a power of God that's going to come upon the church where tumors and cancers and sickness and disease will flee, where multitudes and multitudes in the valley decision will come and bow their knee in the presence of Almighty God. Friend, we have not seen the end. We have not even seen the beginning. I'm reading a, an article about the, the revival in Argentina. A young boy living in a dormitory circumstance situation goes out in the, into the forest with his Bible, starts to read as they're sitting there, and, and it was quite dark in the, in the night, but he had his Bible with him. The Word of God says as he was there praying on his knees, praying on his knees, crying out to God, it said all of a sudden there was a light that began to shine. The light was so bright that he could begin to read his Bible in that darkness. He said as that light started to come around him and consume him, he said all of a sudden there was another light that was even brighter. And this other light began to come near him. And, and, and he knew it was an angel of God. He knew it was the presence of God. He said he got so scared, this lad is only a lad, that he ran for his life through the forest until he got to the dormitory. He got to the dormitory and the dormitory was locked. He couldn't get in. He's banging on the door, smashing on the door, trying to wake somebody up as this light kept coming towards him, this angel kept coming towards him. And finally somebody heard his cry and he opened up the door and this young fellow flew in and jumped on the bed and held, him, held himself. It says there that they shut the door, but the angel of God came into that room. This is the beginning of a revival where literally millions of people came to Christ. This young lad that was sitting there, it says all of a sudden they were so aware of the presence of God that they began to repent. They began to ask God to forgive them. I want to tell you, friends, one of the great moves of God is going to come a repentance in the church. They begin to repent of their sins and goodness knows what. I don't, I don't understand the circumstance, but they said that there was a girl that was in this circumstance, but she didn't want to repent of her sin. She didn't, whether it was pride, she didn't want people to know what she'd been doing. It says that she packed a suitcase and, and, and let, opened up the door. They said, we never saw her again. There's some people that are going to pack their bags and leave when the presence of God comes in. There's a bunch of people that are going to want the presence of God. And it says there that this, this presence of God used to just come. And they begin to, as they begin to worship, as they begin to praise. Friend, we haven't started scratching the surface yet. But I want to tell you, I have something in my heart that I believe. I don't know whether I'll see it, and it doesn't matter if I don't. All I know is I'm going to keep pressing towards it. I'm going to keep believing for it, amen. I'm going to keep preaching it. I'm going to keep speaking it. I'm going to keep a light going. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. I want that light to continue to burn, whether it's this generation or another generation or another generation. All I know is that God is going to pour out of His Spirit upon all flesh. 
All I know is that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or think. All I know is that God is going to do something so dynamic and so powerful. This God who created the universe is going to have a move of His Spirit. It's not a time to fluff around. It's a time to seek God. Time to get on our faces before God. Time. Time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Joe, I've got another six pages, but I think I'll quit. Joe spoke about the anointing the other week. Amazing. We're joint heirs with Jesus. When he said there, I quoted that scripture in John 14, 12, these things that I do, you can do also. That's because Jesus knows something we don't know perhaps. Let me just say it like this. David, Jesus said to you, the things that he did you can do. Why? How can you do the things that he did? Because you're a joint heir. Because we're joint heirs, amen. That takes all the hoo, hoo, huff, huff, huff and puff. That takes all the hoo, 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 what can I do? <laughs> oh, I... We're joint heirs. The same creative power that Jesus stood that day and, and declared, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. That's the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. God, open up my brain. My father worked in an abattoir. And they had these people in the old days. It was all on the floor. And they used to run tours. And there was a man there that used to had all the heads of the cattle. And he'd whack the head in a certain way and open it up and take the brains out. But well, he ate the brains. So, but what he would do was he would put one aside that he'd already done. When the tourists were there looking, he would bring that one in and hit it on the head and open it up and say, another one with no brains. You know what? Our brain is our biggest problem. I want to even whack it open up another one with no brains. <laughs> they that are led by the Spirit, sons and daughters of God. How do I release the power of God? How do I release the power of God? I don't know. Little girl, the possible in my impossible world. War room. How do you do it? You can be a Christian and still live defeated life. I read this regularly. So I don't care if you don't, if you said you read it last week. I don't care. What changed things in this woman's life and her family? I do care, but not much. Devil. Oh, We should be able to recite this. Devil, I don't know where you are, but I know you can hear me. You have played with my mind. 
You've had your way long enough. No more. You are done. Wouldn't it get a shock if we started talking to him like this? You know what you need to do? Get a copy of this. And you may not have the same things that she's got, but just cross out with the things that she's got and put in the things that you've got. And then just get out there and don't clean your teeth before you. Eat garlic, eat whatever you can, and get, a, get right up to his face. <laughs> You've got to excuse me. You've played with my mind long enough. <laughs> no more you are done. Jesus is the Lord of this house. And that means there's no place for you anymore. Now take your lies and your schemes, <laughs> accusations, and get out in Jesus' name. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my daughter. You can't have my man. This house is under new management. That means you are out. <laughs> And another thing, eat a bit more garlic. I'm so sick of you stealing my joy. Now Christians would say, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't say you're sick. Because you say you're sick, you're sick. You've got to be so politically correct. I'm sick of the devil, Amen. <laughs> Anybody else sick of the devil? I am so sick of you stealing my joy. And that's changes too. My joy doesn't come from my friends, my job, or even my husband. My joy is found in Jesus. And just in case you've forgotten, Jesus has already defeated you. Now, oh, go back to hell where you belong, and leave my family alone. The possible in my impossible world. Persistence. Ask God to empower you, to rise up and move out to impact an entire culture and community. They're, they're all there, I believe, but if they're not, we'll get, them, get some more. Amen? How many people want to get empowered by God? This is not the normal. I've lost some stuff here, but who cares? I, ha I cleaned my teeth this morning. The church... I've had enough of playing church. Amen? Lost a little bit of weight and the duds are falling off here. How many people want to get empowered again? And again? And again? Come on, is that only one? Two, three, four. And how many people... Can I say this? Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep believing. Keep believing. We're going to slap a bit more oil on you later on, girl, at the back there. Amen? How are you going? You doing all right? Hey? <laughs> you lasted. You didn't think you'd lasted two hours, did you? Amen? She's here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Jesus is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is our empowerer. Let me just say it again. God empowers the whole universe. That God wants to empower you. Our sun burns at 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. That's not bad. And there's planets that are a thousand times hotter. God is a generator. 
The Bible says you shall receive power. Dunamis power. You shall receive power. 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 You know, if I keep doing that, I'll get power. Power. First step is saying, God, I want it. I want it. Second step is taking a step towards it. Take a step towards it. I'm going to ask you to rise this morning. I'm going to ask you to take a step towards your destiny. Take a step towards your purpose. Leaving behind carnal thinking, carnal ways, carnal thoughts. Leaving behind the negative force that says it will never happen. This is the way it is, it will never happen. You leave behind those things and you start walking towards your destiny. And you start saying all things are possible. All things are possible. Oh my God, we're just that far away from revival. My God, all things are possible. You're going to move by your spirit. You're going to heal the sick. You're going to raise the dead. You're going to move by your spirit. You're going to do exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever imagine or think. And friend, I want to tell you today, if you want to take a step towards your destiny, if you want to step out of the darkness, if you want to step, step out of that which holds you down, if you want those chains broken from your life, if you want to see those things smash, I want to tell you, first believe, first ask God, ask God, and then take a step, take a step, take a step towards your destiny. I'm going to open up this altar right now. And if you want that, just come. Just come, just come right now as we sing. What are we singing? Breathe on it. Come on, let's let's do this right now. There is a shaking that hearts awaken. How God is moving, forever changing us. There is a trembling, there is revival. Holy Spirit, there's an awakening, an awakening. Holy Spirit, hear us now. Breathe on us, holy fire, Lord. Come and fill this place with your presence. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, give your life to Christ. That's the first step, <laughs> giving your life to Christ. Let the King of glory come in. If you're here today and you know you've drifted away from God, but something's stirring inside you today that you realize that you don't have all the answers, but you want God. You haven't got all the answers, but you just want God. I want you to come and stand out here. Stand in front of these ones today and so we can pray with you today. Come right out the front and stand right out here close to me. I've cleaned my teeth. Come and stand. Give your life to Jesus. If today, surrender to Him. Others today that just want to come and stand out here and say, God, I want to be empowered. 